Hey guys, what's up? So this video is going to be for my supporters as well as the people that do not support me. The ones that actually try to attack me and my opinions on, on YouTube. The programming industry is just absolutely filled to the brim with complete assholes and dickheads. If you want an obvious example of that, you know, go to Stack Overflow and ask your basic beginner level question. Um, programmers can be some absolute know-it-all assholes. But just like anything else in humanity, there's a lot of supporters as well on YouTube. And there's people that, that wish me well. There's people that say, hey, happy birthday. I mean, they follow me on different social networks. And some people give their well wishes. People like the tech lead, Patrick, who I just recently reached out to and talked to, uh, he is posting stuff about his life that um, you know, it's sensitive type material. He's, he's obviously getting through a very tough time in his life and people are just absolute assholes about it. So it's not like all of them are programmers. Um, and you know, I'm sure a lot of them aren't, but I, I do want all you want to be YouTubers out there that, that think, and even if it's not YouTube or some other social network these days with like TikTok or anything else, these people don't really care about you. They don't have a vested interest in your life. And nobody should make the mistake of actually thinking that they do. And make no mistake that a lot of people watch you and they watch the sideshow that you display on YouTube and they, they watch you because they want to see the meltdown. They want to see this circus sideshow type of thing. It makes them feel better about themselves. And YouTubers should definitely stick to what they do. And that's exactly what it is that I'm going to do. I'm going to piss people off. If you don't like it, fuck you. You know, don't watch the video. And all those people that, that express their comments and maybe I'll misphrase something or I'll get a, a fact or two off. You know, I'm sorry. I have a life outside of coding. And I actually got into coding in an entrepreneurial spirit more than just trying to be a, a know-it-all asshole nerd to try to make other people look bad. You know, so grow the fuck up. So I'm typically not one to talk about my success, but I honestly feel like I have a place to talk about it these days. I've been working my ass off for 10 years. I dropped out of college. I went to a community college for business administration, never finished, and dropped out. I self-taught myself how to be a programmer 10 years ago, and I started a company back in 2011. I'm also a senior engineer. I now live in a modest $1 million house in Great Falls, which is the second richest town in the entire United States, next to Los Altos, where the CEO of, uh, of Google lives and uh, some other people like Sheryl Sandberg and such. I actually don't tell you guys this to flaunt. I'm telling you this because this is what hard work does. It pays off. If you do work hard and you don't believe in the naysayers, I had people that told me I couldn't be an engineer. I have, tell, I have people that tell me I'm not a good programmer now. I don't care about any of that stuff. I really don't, and this is why. One of the ways I was able to achieve success was because I did start a business and I focused on technologies that just weren't in the hype, but things that I needed in order to succeed. I don't like reinventing the wheel. I don't like rewriting code for the fuck of it. One of the companies that I use to get to where I'm at is Linode. Linode is my sponsor for this channel. But they've also had a major impact on my life to be able to get my businesses off the ground. And most of the people from Zuckerberg to the guy that started LinkedIn to Peter, T like so many different people that are that are that have success in this world, they were born with it. And, and if they weren't necessarily born with the billions of dollars they have now, they were born with way more advantages than I ever had. So that said, I was able to make things work, even with the odds and cards stacked against me. And now I need to figure out what it is that I'm trying to do for the next 10 years. And I'm not sure whether or not that should be to pursue more money or whether it, I know that like what I need to do is actually pursue personal health, continue to go places and see different things. I'm very grateful for the things that I've seen uh, just over the last four or five years I've gone to so many different places and um, those experiences they definitely last and they're worth more than the sports cars and the the house that you live in and the area that you live in those experiences are absolutely worth more and I do agree with that um, a lot of people say money doesn't buy happiness but money sure as hell makes happiness a lot easier to achieve but the problem that I think a lot of us have 
is that we don't know when to stop. We don't know when to, to slow down and to when to take a break. And that actually leads to burnout. And for me, I've been able to avoid burnout for 10 years of churn and burn because I've always, I, I've expanded into different technologies. I, I don't get excited anymore about, you know, the latest version of React rewriting shit for, you know, to get the same result. That stuff doesn't excite me. It, what excites me is AR, WebAssembly, virtual reality, new things, new horizons. Those types of things still excite me. And those are the things that I focus on when I'm outside of my day-to-day -day job. And it makes me a better developer. It also makes me a better person, a business owner, a better YouTuber. And I think that I've been able to avoid burnout by doing and focusing on those things. But one of the, the issues that I currently have is that it is like when you have when you finally get to where you want to be, like you just kind of want more and more and more. And like, there's this never ending cycle and you always like, even with YouTube, it's like, Oh yeah, I got 120 some thousand people that follow me. Now I want 500,000. I got to compete with this and that and do this and that. And, and really I don't have to do any of it. And I, I what I need to focus on is living my life and being happy. And I think that that's what you guys have to focus on as well. But at the same time, like it takes a lot of hard work and sacrifice in order to get, what you want especially if what you want is like financial independence and you want to drive sports cars and live in a million dollar house or whatever like that's going to take a lot of work especially if you don't have handouts given to you at birth however if you're in africa asia europe united states south america programmers are emerging from all over the world and you do have the ability in this global economy to, to separate yourself from one another if you guys focus on your skills and your passion, and if you don't lose sight of humanity and the reason why you're supposed to exist on this world, I have a very strong feeling that it's not to be about how, how to be the best coder in the world. It, it's, it's more than that. It's about how to experience the world and how to make it a better place if you can, how to live amidst the insanity that is day-to-day -day life, and to be happy uh, whether you have family or you don't have family or you have kids or you don't like it's you can you can find happiness in this world I think and programming can probably help you achieve that but it will not be the end it will not be the end result of your pursuit I also want you guys to know that no matter what type of effect you're feeling whether it's imposter syndrome or something else that stuff is normal. I've had all those feelings as well. I had people that told me I couldn't do this. I had people that laughed at me, even my YouTube channel. I, you know, people might even do that now. I, you know, I just don't care and you shouldn't either. Don't let those, don't let anybody outside of your, your sphere, unless it's like literally your wife or kids or somebody that you really hold dear to your heart. Don't let them deter you from what it is that you want to do. Take advice from people. But always listen to the advice that comes from your gut and your heart. All right, guys. So I do want to just basically state, live your life and make sure you're enjoying yourself. Don't try to pursue things that you need to evaluate what it is that you're trying to pursue. And, and if you're on your deathbed, what is it that is going to make you happy? And there's probably no more beautiful speech in the world than a former CEO of Coca-Cola, his name was uh, Brian Dyson. And he wrote, like, I think an incredible speech. He, he says, it, so it's called the five balls of life. And he says, imagine life as a game in which you are juggling five balls in the air. You name them work, family, health, friends, and spirit. And you're keeping all of these in the air. You will soon understand that work is a rubber ball. If you drop it, it will bounce back. But the other four balls, Family, health, friends, and spirit are made of glass. If you drop one of these, they will irrevocably be scuffed, marked, nicked, damaged, or even shattered. They will never be the same. You must understand that and strive for balance in your life. But how? Don't undermine your worth by comparing yourself with others. It is because we are different that makes each of us special. Don't set your goals on what other people deem to be important. Only what is best for you. Don't take for granted the things closest to your heart. Cling to them as you would your life, for without them, life is meaningless. Don't let your life slip through your fingers by living in the past or for the future. By living your life one day at a time, you will have lived all the days of your life. 
Don't give up when you have something to give. Nothing is really over until the moment you stop trying. Don't be afraid to admit that you were less than perfect. It is a fragile thread that binds us together. Don't be afraid to encounter risks. It is by taking chances that we learn how to be brave. Don't shut out love from your life by saying it, it's impossible to find. The quickest way to receive love is to give it. The fastest way to lose it is to hold it too tightly. And the best way to keep love is to give it wings. Don't run through your life so fast that you forget not only where you've been, but also where you're going. Don't forget a person's greatest emotional need is to feel appreciated. Don't be afraid to learn. Knowledge is weightless, a treasure you can always carry easily. Don't use time or words carelessly. Neither can be retrieved. Life is not a race, but a journey to be savored each step of the way. Yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, and today is a gift. That is why they call it the present. That is an amazing speech, in my opinion, guys. All right, I hope you all have a great day, and take care.